I went for a full mouthful. Wow. That is actually quite good, isn't it? It's not a sentence many boys say to me. <laughs> Today, David Atherton reveals his secret recipe for winning the Great British Baking Show. Theo tees off on his challenge, castmates. He teamed up with someone who lost him basically half a million dollars. And Rachel and Colleen are here to break down the latest hookups and heartbreaks on Temptation Island. Please ask me, I'm waiting for it. This is your reality check. It's time to turn up. Happy Monday, everyone. Welcome to the show. It's a big day for us here at Reality Check as we're celebrating our 100th episode. Woo! Yay! <laughs> I'm Darren Karp, and with me today is the incomparable Dave Quinn and People.com writer Jody Guglielmi. Hi. How are you guys? Did I get it right? You nailed it. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> and guys, I am so happy to be here to celebrate your 100th show. And in honor of that, I actually brought you guys a little bit of a gift. Take a look. Uh Hi guys, it's Candace Diller Bassett from The Real Housewives of Potomac, and a little birdie told me that you guys made it to 100 episodes. What? That's insane. So I'm here to scream happy 100 episode. Ah! That's crazy. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of drama. That's a lot of gossip, honey. I can't stand it, but I can. So happy 100th episode. This is insane, and it's really special because I think I was your first guest. So it's especially special. I cannot wait to see a million more episodes from Reality Check. I love you guys. I love the staff. You guys are amazing. The hosts are some of my favorite in the game. Keep doing amazing things. Mwah! Love you so much. And it's five o'clock somewhere, honey. Cheers to you. Cheers. Mm. Where is my wine? <laughs> yeah, sorry I didn't bring that, you but promise I brought me. Candace. She's gorgeous. She gets She's hit her with gorgeous. Every thank you take. so much, Candace. We love you so much. Well, thank you, Dave, for bringing that to us. <laughs> Let's get into the top of the show and break down our top five. At number five, is Meg Ryan and John Mellencamp's engagement back on? Days after people confirmed the pair had split, the actress has been seen wearing her engagement ring from the rocker on her left finger. A source tells people that Meg was also seen wearing the ring when she attended a special screening of the upcoming movie Bombshell in New York City. The actress recently opened up about her engagement to InStyle, admitting that the two weren't planning on a wedding anytime soon. Ooh. Do we think they're back on or does she just like the jewelry? I think they're probably back on. I think they're think? back on. An engagement oh. ring's a big deal. You don't yeah. just casually wear that. So to be wearing it again, I think it means they're definitely at least working on on their relationship. The thing that bums me out the most is that she's not in Beverly Hills right now. Because if she was in Beverly Hills, they'd be filming this for The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills with yes. Teddy, and then we'd know the answer. That's the unfortunate thing. That's the All roads lead thing. back to Bravo. <laughs> <laughs> always, <laughs> always. At number four... Tarek El Moussa's girlfriend is having no problem bonding with his kids. On Sunday, the father of two and his new lady, Heather Ray Young, spent their day on the soccer field cheering on his nine-year-old daughter, Taylor. The couple was also joined by Tarek's four-year-old son, Brayden James, who cuddles up to his dad's new girlfriend in a sweet photo shared to his dad's Instagram. Uh -huh. Is it too soon? <laughs> I don't think so. No. I think every relationship goes at their own pace. And if they feel comfortable, clearly the kids get along with her. They seem very close. Why not? Yeah, I think it's great to, in, you know, kind of join those families together as early as you can. Yeah, I feel like the kids are always a number one priority. And of if course. they're okay with it, then I feel like the world should be Yeah, there's be no okay yeah. set rules when it comes to this. So it's really whatever makes everybody the most comfortable. True. Plus, it's pretty cute on the gram. So I cute. know. Pretty cute. <laughs> at number three... Khloe Kardashian can't keep up with the accolades. The reality star attended the 2019 People's Choice Awards along with sisters Kim, Courtney, and momager Kris Jenner. And while the family took home the award for best reality show, Khloe also nabbed the best reality star award, unbeknownst <laughs> to her. Uh, Jody, you actually broke this story. Yes. Tell us about it. I mean, they went up there to accept the award as a family, and Kim and Kris talked. Courtney and Khloe did not. But come to find out, Chloe had actually won a separate award. <laughs> so people were waiting for her accept acceptance speech. The fans who voted for her were like, wow, we can't wait to be thanked for this. Alas. And they <laughs> never did. But Chloe said it was so loud in there that she actually didn't know she won until after she got off stage. 
So she's picking up so many awards she can't even keep track of. Them I all. love it. I yeah, love that's it. like a problem to have. Like, <laughs> right? oh, I was too loud. I I couldn't hear over the applause. You know, I just, people I love me so award. much. It just makes me deaf. Yeah, this that's... happens to me all the time. <laughs> yeah, very it's... relatable content, Chloe. A very, very relatable, relatable content. <laughs> At number two. Dream Renee's third birthday was fit for a princess. Black China celebrated her daughter's new age milestone this weekend with an Aladdin themed birthday bash. Both China and Dream were dressed up as Jasmine. Dream's dad, Rob Kardashian, also celebrated Baby Girl's big day on Friday with a trolls themed party. Auntie Kyla even took the birthday girl on her first helicopter ride, complete with celebratory cupcakes. How cute was this? I want to go on a helicopter ride with celebratory cupcakes for my birthday. I just want to go to an Aladdin-themed birthday. I yeah. just want to go to a, like any Kardashian party <laughs> okay. in general, birthday or not. We have different levels of yes. what excites We're us, all... and I feel like mine's the saddest. <laughs> no, no, I love Aladdin, too. OK. I mean, I you could party. technically go to a costume store right now and get like That's an Aladdin thing. Wait, Judy. Like, come on. The point is to be with Black China and Rob Kardashian I know, and all true. the Kardashian clan. That's true. Right. That's I true. bet that party was exactly what she wished for. Yeah, a lot of Jafars. Oh, oh Dayton. <laughs> At number one. Noelle Robinson is opening up, up about her sexuality. The 20-year-old daughter of supermodel Cynthia Bailey and actor Leon Robinson came out as sexually fluid on Sunday's episode on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Yes, she did. In an emotional conversation with her mother, she says, people try to box everyone in and put labels on everything, but I don't really do that. Okay, let's break this down because it seems to me, you know, she just kind of, she was just like, you know, Cynthia was like, oh, have you met any men? And she's like, actually, there's ladies I'm romantically involved with. I thought that was so cool. It was mm -hmm. so cool, and it comes such a long way. It's it's crazy, I talk about this a lot, but representation is so important. And she just casually coming out to her mom this way and her mom being accepting and loving yeah. is helping people all over understand that that's okay. And I just think back to the day when I came out and how hard that was for me and my parents. Absolutely. It was not nearly as easy as this 20 years ago. It's amazing how far we've come. I'm really proud of her. And me as well. It's nice to know that it gets better and 2019 is a lot different than any other decade yeah, and I'm for sure. excited for her and her adventure. I think yeah. it speaks to the bond that they have as mother and daughter that like Dave said, she was able yeah. to say it so casually and with ease and really clearly without fear of judgment, which I think is incredible. Yeah, yeah. and Cynthia was just super supportive yeah. as every parent should be. Well, Cynthia has dipped her toe in the lady pond, so. <laughs> Don't I know it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's been it. nice to kind of see, you know, they're all enjoying themselves Absolutely. over there in Atlanta. Absolutely. All right, guys, I need to switch, unfortunately, moods here, because we have, have a breaking news story today. This is a tough one. Former star defensive end of the New York Jets, Mark Gastineau, has opened up for the first time about being repeatedly raped as a child. In an interview published with the New York Post on Saturday, the 62-year-old, who was recently declared cancer-free, told the Post that a man sexually assaulted him when he was between the ages of 11 and 14. Mark told the outlet, quote, I was raped, but I held it in for so long. Maybe cancer has made me confront it, end quote. The athlete says he suppressed the trauma for years until he married his third wife, Joanne, 12 years ago, admitting that he didn't even think about it until I married her and I could trust someone to tell. This is a lot. I feel... I feel so horrible that this happened, but also really positive that he was felt comfortable enough to say it because I think it's important for the world to know. What do you guys think? I think, like you said, it is incredibly brave of him. Um, my heart just goes out to him. I hope that he is finding peace and solace and coming to terms with this in a healthy way, which he definitely seems like he is. I mean, I just, it's heartbreaking. It really yeah, is. Yeah, it's one of those things where not a lot of men have the courage to speak out about sexual assaults that they've experienced. We know that it happens to men very frequently and hearing somebody like him um, makes it easier for other people who have been victims of it. I, I think that's really brave of him. I agree. I mean, especially because football players are this epitome of like masculinity right. and manliness and like to see that something this could happen to anybody like that, I think is important for people to see that, you know, come forward, be comfortable enough. I mean, I love the relationship he has with his wife, but yeah. you know, I, I'm I'm proud of him, and I, I feel like he's really brave for doing it. Yeah, it makes so. other people feel like they're not alone. They're not the only ones. Right. Do and you I, think that it'll be a catalyst for other people, hopefully, to feel comfortable enough to open up? Hopefully always in that sort yeah. of situation. What I also think is really interesting here is that he talks about how cancer and beating cancer yeah. really changed his perspective on that sort of thing. And sometimes in life when we overcome these major hurdles that we have, it can change the way we think about things in the past. 
you know, a lot of people criticize victims of sexual assault for not coming forward right away when they go through this sort of thing. But you can understand the shame and humiliation and hear somebody who says that it wasn't even until all these years later that right. I was able to finally talk about it. Yeah, I kind of think it was it was a wake-up call we all needed, that not everyone's going to say it immediately after they right. happened, and everyone has their own reasons, but I wish him all the best, of course. Yeah. Well, it's not always easy to identify child sexual abuse, and it can be even more challenging to step in if you suspect something isn't right. If you or someone you know is being sexually abused, please contact the National Sexual Assault Hotline at 1-800-656-HOPE. Well, Jody, thanks for stepping away from your reporting yeah. to break down our top stories today. I really appreciate it. Stay tuned. After the break, Dave and I are chatting with two of the single ladies from Temptation Island. Don't go anywhere. It's a little too much for me. <laughs> Joining me now is Rachel and Colleen from Temptation Island. Welcome, ladies. <laughs> what a hey, show. Welcome, right? about that? It was a no, lot. Go out there. Dave liked that. I was I, very happy. I don't know if I liked it. Um, <laughs> so I have to ask this right off the bat. Uh, you were cast as sexy singles uh, to tempt men in relationships, while the women in relationships have their own temptations in their villa. Why did you decide to go on the show? <laughs> Basic question. Well, um, I was a huge fan of the show last season, and I thought, this show is crazy. This would be so fun to be a part of. Turns out season two is way crazier than <laughs> <Yeah>. season one. <laughs> Came in at the right time. Yeah, right? Yeah. Right? And for me, I was just a, I'm a huge fan of reality TV, so I kind of saw this. I had an in. Yeah. Try to get involved and into the world of it. So. Yeah. Did yeah. you either of you think you were really going to find love? I thought I was. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> there still is the possibility. When you go on the show, you're there for the right reasons. You know, I think everyone came in with really pure intentions and were there to build relationships, whether they were platonic and helping out the couples or whether it was something in the possibility of romance. Did you learn right away, like, who wasn't there for the right reasons? Like, could you sift oh. those people out really quickly? I really don't think anyone was there. There were, yeah. Especially of us girls. I mean, we're... We're very close to all the girls still to this day. I don't yeah. think there's a day that goes by without us talking. Yeah. <laughs> right. um, but I think everyone genuinely were there. We all thought we were going to meet our future husbands. Like, yeah. We all came in very strong, wow. yeah. very excited. I think when you go on a show that has such an intense concept, you have to go in with the right reasons. I don't think you could have made it that far without those intentions, mm -hmm. you know? Right. How did being on the show change your views about relationships? Oh my God, I view dating completely different now. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a whole one. Like better yeah. or worse? You, well, you have to keep in mind, we were in a house 24 seven for 30 days where all we talked about was relationships and love and what we're looking for and what we've done wrong. So it was like- And what they're currently doing wrong. Right, and what... it was like intense drunk therapy for 30 <laughs> days. So once you come back out, you have a whole different view of maybe relationships you're in or potential mm -hmm. relationships that could yeah. People you've dated in the past. Yeah, you see things totally different. Whoa. Like, oh, maybe I was the problem versus like, <laughs> It's like rehab, but with drinking. Maybe yeah. we need yeah. drunk therapy, That's right? Different. Maybe we'll change the name of the show to Drunk Therapy, just a working title. Good idea. What was it like when you first guys, when you got to the house and met all these strangers? I mean, were you nervous? I was terrified. Yeah. I mean, meeting. Well, meeting all the girls, it was like one thing. Is this going to be competitive? Is this right. going to be? Yeah. Who's the one to watch out for? Like I said, I'm a huge fan of reality TV, so I'm right. just, my mind is turning. But then once we met all the girls, okay, that's checked, checked, done, we're good here. Now, who are these guys gonna be? And why did they bring their girlfriends here? Mm -hmm. What's wrong with them, <laughs> basically? Good point, yeah. Yeah. good point. How did you navigate the relationships? I mean, were you just trying to be yourselves or were you going in a little bit more coy and maybe a little bit more reserved than you normally would be? I think definitely being ourselves. And that was, I think, one of the huge part of casting for reality TV is I think they get personalities that are bubbly and are willing to communicate and put mm -hmm. themselves out there. So it was pretty easy once you were in the house. Yeah. And then you forget the cameras are around and then you just kind of dive right into these relationships. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. And then yeah. someone's clothes are coming off. Yeah, and well, you know. <laughs> it's just a typical day, you know, in our lives. It's Tuesday, yeah. <laughs> I actually want to get into Thursday's episode. It started off hot and heavy with what looked like it would be a threesome. Mm -hmm. uh, what did you really think about it? I mean, you were there in the house. Well, David and Sam definitely already had a connection, so that wasn't very surprising to us. Mm -hmm. Them in the shower, 
et cetera, et cetera. What really threw us for the loop was when Peyton walked in. Yeah, that was a shock for all of us. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. So my jaw was also on the floor in real life and watching it back on TV. Just yeah. Because I think, too, we were in a huge house. There was... 14, 16 people there in yeah. there. Now we're so, getting the good footage. You know, well, yeah. they're doing Lots that. Rachel and I might be in the hot, hot tub with <laughs> my <laughs> So we didn't find out till the next day. And then actually watching your friends do this on Thursday, we're like, uh, wait, yeah. Peyton did what? We're yeah. like David and Peyton. Yeah, yeah. No, we're like FaceTime. You know, <laughs> we're like, wait a minute. Oh my goodness. And the yeah, living situations, well. are you separate? Or are you living in so separate? So we lived in the guest house across across the driveway. So we yeah. were a stone's throw away from mm -hmm. this big house, but, but we're with them they do all the over day. Right. The aerial views, you can see there's the four bedrooms and then the middle room. Right. We didn't yeah. fit in any of those. <laughs> well, bedrooms. some nights maybe we Maybe. Did. Oh, oh, we oh, oh, some nights. Good stuff. I gotta get myself into that house. <laughs> I know. Also on the you latest. You would do real well, I'll just tell what, you. Am I, I think am you I would. tempting? Yeah. Yeah. Tempting us. Oh, 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 guys, stop. You're joining in. Kara. Um, also on the latest episode, Peyton finally <laughs> snagged a date with Casey, but. It's her second uh, date. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. true. He seemed very comfortable with the two of you in the hot tub where you were talking about connections. Let's take a look. Yeah, and I just didn't, I where don't, I didn't or don't know what those connections are. Maybe this is where Casey finally snaps out of it and notices that I'm actually interested in being more than his friend. And hopefully it's me instead of Peyton because I really do think we'd be really good together. The dramatic music Ooh, I know. <laughs> changes everything for me. Uh, <laughs> you know, Rachel, were you threatened by Peyton at this point? Um, to be honest, no. I mean, I knew... I did go on one date with Casey already so far, and I kind of knew that he was still really into his girlfriend. And if it was going to happen between us, it would have to happen organically. It wasn't right. really my place to really fight and put my foot down there because that's what Peyton was doing and it obviously wasn't working out for her. So I kind of took this more calm, cool, collected, laid back, more like focused. You got to, to see it. her mistakes yeah. and you kind of did the opposite of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. And you'll it. see if it works. So. Yeah, right. <laughs> Now, a couple of weeks ago, it turned into a big deal when you, Colleen, were holding hands with the scantily clad Casey yeah. under the table, <laughs> very close to his nether regions, I'll say. Uh, what is it about Casey that kind of draws the ladies to him and some of the gay men? First and foremost, <laughs> I want to clarify, Casey was wearing boxers underneath. Okay, all right, okay. uh -huh. I play back, my mom's like, Colleen, that's just gross. I was like, he had pants on underneath those tiny little apron. Um, I think what drew us to Casey is Casey was a really, he's a fun, sweet, funny guy who's always looking to goof around and have yeah. a good time. So I think when you're in such an intense and stressful situation, just having someone who can crack a joke makes all the world's difference. Oh, that's Nothing awesome. like an upper, you know, thigh area for oh, a man yeah. to really show yeah. off his good stuff, oh, right? Absolutely. Right. And that's he's wearing an apron. Woo! Yeah, woo! <laughs> you crack! <laughs> he <says> ground turkey. <laughs> oh, man. Well, at the top of Thursday show, Casey had some questionable things to say regarding his relationship. Let's revisit that. Casey, you're putting everyone in the friend zone. That's kind of fun, like, to be able to just, like, do whatever the f*** you want to do and talk to any girl. And, like, even right before I met Ashley, I was still doing that. Honestly, if Ashley broke up with me, I'd be okay. A lot of harsh words being fired yeah. here. You know, yeah. what did you make of him saying this, especially when he basically told Peyton on their date that he was planning to marry his girlfriend after the show? It seems mm. a little shady. I mean, I think that... Casey was obviously pretty intoxicated <laughs> when he said this, but I also think that in his head, he's very literal. Right. So he's like, oh, well, if Ashley and I broke up, like, it would be fine. Like, I remember my single life and I enjoyed it. Maybe that would be a place, like, where I'd go back to. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that's, he, like, wants that to happen. I think that that's just... Yeah. He was just expressing. I also think in the house, your opinion can change in a matter of minutes. There's so many factors going on. You're seeing clips of potentially your current girlfriend, your ex-girlfriend. You don't know what's going on. And I think exploring those relationships. So Casey was talking to Medina. They're just friends at this point. So he might have a different stance talking to Medina than he would with Rachel, where he has maybe a more romantic connection. So Connected as hell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. Connected as hell. I need that on a t-shirt. Connected as hell. Yeah, that's what I need. Makeup. So we still have a lot more season and left, can you tease a little bit about what we can expect? Craziness. That's Just, all in one lot, word. A lot craziness. of drama, a lot of ups and downs. A lot of tears. Any more threesomes? Um, no more threesomes. <laughs> At least 
from what we know. I don't know. Yeah, I tune in, I'm like, what? I only lived in the guy's house. <laughs> What's been the thing that you've watched that you've been like, I can't believe I didn't know that was happening? I think just everything that's going on in the other villa. Obviously, yeah. we've heard, you know, we've been able to talk to the couples after and some of the singles, but just seeing it and how it played out, I'm like, you left out that chunk of the story. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Listen, I mean, we all know reality TV and we're all fans. Who's the mean girl? We know there's one. Oh. Tell us. I really don't think there is. I don't think so either. That's the what? sad thing. No, we all joke. There is a group chat we talk every day, all day. I'm like, and we're I dyed my day. hair and she got new shoes and it's just 24 seven. We're like all Guess obsessed who I with each saw. other. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We're all like, we're really strong. It sounds like you're the mean girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess I am. Yeah, I guess, <laughs> all right, I'll take it. All <laughs> well, thank you, ladies, for being here today. So Watch much. Temptation Island Thursday nights at 10, 9 Central <laughs> on USA Network. We have to go to break, but when we come back, the recently crowned champ of the Great British Baking Show is Skyping in from across the pond. Stay tuned. The winner is... David. <laughs> so like, nervous and excited. I didn't amazing. even do anything. Welcome back to the show. <laughs> We're so excited. Here with us now is the newly crowned winner of the Great British Baking Show, David Atherton. David, how are you? Congratulations on the big win. How surreal was it to hear your name called in that moment? Because I'm jittery right now. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy to keep on reliving it again and again. Um, but at the time, it was just incredible. Did you have any idea that you were going to win? Like, did you think that you nailed this one, or were you, it was 50-50? I, I felt that I nailed it, but I felt I'd nailed other weeks as well, so I was not sure at all. Uh, there was definitely part of me that just didn't want to think I could have won. Well, the show has become a massive crossover hit here in the States. And thanks to Netflix, this was actually the first time we got to see the show airing somewhat at the same time as it did in the UK. Did you feel the love coming your way from the United States? Oh, my goodness, I really felt the love from the US. Uh, so many people got in touch. Um, and obviously, social media doesn't work in the same time zones. So um, I felt bad for sometimes people having some spoilers. Um, but yeah, I definitely felt the love from the US. David, you made history with your big win on the Great uh, British Baking Show as the first champ to get the top prize without ever being named Star Baker. Was that frustrating week after week coming close but never really getting to that top prize? Uh, I think week on week, um, I was just so happy to get through. Um, I think now if I hadn't have won, I would feel a little bit sore about not um, getting a star baker in any of the weeks. Right. But as it was, I got the top prize, so I was happy enough. <laughs> you also had the best technical record of anyone in baking show history. Just how hard are those challenges? Because that seems like a pretty big feat. Yeah, they're tricky. I mean, no one finds them easy. Um, and you can't have all the skills to be able to do all of them well. Um, I think I work quickly, and that helps. And I work quite logically. Um, but yeah, no, they're really tricky. That's definitely the hardest part of bake, the baking show. I mean, baking is it's like a science. It's so, so specific. Is there anything you baked on the show that you would never bake again, that you never even want to see again? <laughs> uh, well, one of my technicals was very poor, the souffle beignets. Um, I, I don't really like deep frying things. So I think uh, both of the things, the cassatelles as well, that also were deep fried, I won't be doing them again. Well, this is a question a lot of viewers have been debating here in the States, and I need to know what you think on it. Is the Paul Hollywood handshake overrated? Uh, I don't think so, because the Paul Hollywood handshake kind of rewards a perfect bake um, or something really creative. So I still think it's like the highest accolade. Last year, he gave out quite a lot, and I think that kind of cheapened it slightly. Yeah. But this year, there was just four, so it was really special. And you got one of them, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I was I was really proud of my Hollywood handshake. Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, for those of us that won them, we wouldn't say that they're uh, overrated at all. All right, can we talk about what's happening behind the scenes? Like, I know that there's drama going on. Do you have a lot of time to eat each other's, like, baked goods after judging, and do you judge them harshly? <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, there's a lot of crew in the tent, um, and they definitely swoop in and have a lot of the leftovers. Um, but someone actually fights them off and makes sure that uh, the bakers get a taste of everyone else's bake. Um, and I would be 
I was quite a harsh critic. I would like to know why someone did well or um, question whether someone uh, did badly. Uh, so yeah, we all like uh, trying each other's. The hardest job on set has to be the crew member keeping the desserts <laughs> away from other people, right? That's got to be the worst job. <laughs> Has yeah, that will be. have to be pretty strong and dominant to be able to fight everyone off. Yeah, I'm sure. How far in advance do you know about the challenges in order to prep? Uh, so the briefs come in um, a few weeks before the first show, uh, but the speed in which you have to come up with a recipe, um, practice it, research it, uh, means that you don't have a lot of time to really prep. So therefore, it's then the week leading up to that, that weekend. Um, that you have more time to think about it and practice um, and refine it. And and how much does it all cost? Because you pay for supplies for your practice bakes during the week, right? Well, actually, they did on Bake Off. Um, oh, sorry, Baking Show. Um, and then in recent years, people got a little bit of money, and I think we got the most money they'd had before. So we actually did get money to go towards it. It wouldn't cover everything. If you wanted to practice something 10 times, it definitely wouldn't cover it but we had enough money to cover our ingredients for a couple of practices. And how often were you practicing yourself? Uh, I think I practiced the least. <laughs> Some of my bakes <laughs> I practiced once, a couple of them I didn't practice at all before going into the tent. Uh, I think people have, I, I was working full time and I was very busy, but I also saw the importance of letting your brain um, think and rest. And especially if you've been creative, you've got to have that space uh, without baking. So sometimes I thought it was better to chill out than it was to practice nonstop. I love it. I love how cool, calm, collective you are about it, too. You really just never showed your sweat, and that's what I loved about you. Um, I have some personal questions, though. I know you're in a very happy relationship with your partner, Nick. How has he felt about all this success? Oh, Nick's been great. Um, he's a very strategic thinker as well, so he's been very helpful um, in all of this afterwards. Um, but he's, yeah, he's very proud. Um, he'd never seen the baking show before, so it was new to him. Um, so it's quite exciting with him watching it the first time as well. Do you think wedding bells are in your future? Mm. <laughs> I mean, if they were, I would be the one that has to propose. Oh, all right. I get it. I'm the same way. I also want to gossip a little bit about some of your fellow bakers. Who do you still keep in touch with? Uh, actually, almost all of us still keep in touch. We were a really close group this year. Uh, I just went for dinner with uh, Michael, Alice, and Henry just the other night, and I was speaking on the phone to Steph today. So uh, we do, yeah, really stay in contact. I am so glad to hear that. And it's been fun watching you and Alice and Henry and Michael all. I've seen you on each other's social media accounts. Two posts from Alice had everyone here in the States questioning whether Henry and Michael might be dating. Anything you can confirm or deny for us? Hmm. I'm sorry, they're playing with you like that. Oh. No. <laughs> They're definitely not. You're, we're breaking our hearts here. <laughs> I'm not very close. There's a big bromance going on there, but no, they're not a couple. All right. Oh, man. Well, the holidays are around the corner. <laughs> and since we have you on the line, we polled Twitter and asked our followers, what is their go-to dessert for the holidays? And with 42% of the vote, you all said cookies. David, what is your go-to holiday dessert? Mine would be a panettone, uh, a panettone, and hopefully with some marzipan in the middle of it. Oh, okay, that's fancy. Yeah, I mean, like uh, cookies. Like Twitter said, cookies. So uh, clearly, not everyone can be on the British baking show. <laughs> Lastly, David, before we let you go, what's next for you? Will there be a bake shop we can come visit soon? And can I get a discount? <laughs> I don't know about a shop. I like writing, so I want to write recipes. So if someone wants to give me a book deal um, or a column, that's what I would really love to do. Oh, that would be amazing. Yeah, I'm kind of into that. I'm into that too. And I think it's so amazing that you're doing all this while balancing your healthcare work. You're the best. <laughs> thank you very much. Thanks, guys. David, thank you so much for joining us today. Can't wait to see what you have cooking next. Up next, Theo from the MTV's The Challenge is putting his cast on blast. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. I have Theo from The Challenge on the line. You mentioned in last night's episode that you've lost friendships over this game. Who are you still close with from the cast? Um, literally, the only people um, I have respect for and I can say who are, who are real people. I'm only, I'm only friends with real people. Like, 
off often on on the show. Like, I know it's a game, but I still I still try and hold it down whether you're on a show or not. <clears throat> like I said, re- respect and friendship two different things. Um, but the only people I I, I I talk to in my own personal time would be like uh, Georgia, uh, there, uh, Turbo, and Josh. I do, well, Jordan as well, but like I said, we want that like, close friends. But they're, they're, they're the five. And Tori as well. Am I missing anyone? And Bananas. <laughs> Them seven, that is it. All right. Like, that... I, I, I occasionally talk to Wes, but only on, only on a respect level. That's, rather a, than a... that's a strong alliance, though, if you guys came together. I mean, that's a, that's a stacked team if you guys teamed up. Big if, but you know, t- I, I couldn't trust Wes or, or Bananas, but you know, <laughs> to, to, an, to, an, to an extent, you know, to, to help each other through the first four weeks, I could. Well, but, on, know, that, yeah. on that note, are you ready for a reality check favorite? It's time to play Cast on Blast. <laughs> All right, Theo, I have a feeling this is going to be a juicy one for you. It's pretty straightforward. I'm going to name some of your castmates, and I want you to tell me what you'll miss most about them and what you won't miss at all, okay? So don't hold back. Are you ready to play? All right, I'm ready. All yeah. right, let's start the host with the most. You spent a lot of time this season on the Proving Ground next to him. Tell me what you'll miss most and not at all about TJ Lavin. TJ, oh, my God. Um... I tell you what, he's very funny, very witty. He's just, he's just, he's just like a, he's just a good dude, isn't he? Really, like we, we only see him briefly, you know. what I mean, a few times a week, but um, yeah, he's just cool. And uh, like the main thing is when what gives me joy is being able to make TJ laugh. It's a, it's you a, make it's, him it's, laugh. it's an accomplishment. It's like winning the proving ground if you can make TJ laugh. Exactly. exactly what are you not exactly. gonna miss about him? Um, I don't know. What what am I not going to miss? That's a tough one. Him not caring about any of us. <laughs> <laughs> He's like your challenge, Dad. Yeah. Well, no, like, he don't go, he, no, he does care, but he just doesn't get like, all right, guys, see you later. I'm off. i got better things to do now. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. What about your UK teammate, Jenny? Strong performer. Oh, my God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to miss... Like, it's going to be the both of her. I'm going to miss hearing stories from her, but I'm not going to, I tell you, I'm not going to miss. I, I've never met anyone in the world who talks as much as Jenny. Me and Georgia called her the foghorn. You know, like a boat, you could hear Jenny from miles away. She's got such a loud voice, and she does not ever stop using it. It's like, all right, Jenny, shut up now, all right? We love you, <laughs> but we can't hear one more word come out of your mouth, like... She could talk about her guinea, a pet guinea pig for five hours straight. Wow. Jen, well, good heart, Jen, but I don't care about your guinea pig anymore, <laughs> right? I don't care. Right? She, oh. yeah, she's mouth, but she's got a good heart. What about Georgia, your actual true friend? Yeah, Georgia. Um, what's the first question? Am I going to miss her? Yeah. What am I going to miss about her? Tell you what, she is, like, an amazing, like hand on foot if you ever ask her to do anything opposite side of the house and me and bear are quite lazy like oh georgia couldn't make us an iced coffee and a cheese toasty could you she's like all right no worries so it's like absolute perfect service all day every day and she doesn't complain about it could be right before bed she's i don't know she's like what you call like a wifey without being in a relationship with her yeah she's a friend wifey a friend wifey yeah, 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 like that, like absolute, absolute maid. <laughs> I need to get one of those, damn. I don't, get, I, don't have that, I don't have that here, you know, I don't have it here. What won't um, you miss about her? Her loud, like, <laughs> if you're trying to talk, especially in that house, you're trying to talk, I got a normal, like, sound, like, uh, normal pitch voice, you know. When she talks, she just talk over you, rude, just interrupt, because she could talk so much louder than everyone else, she could just talk... When she starts, we had a few arguments about it. I'm like, shut up! I'm trying to tell my story first. Um, but that's what I won't miss. She's, uh, a, inter- she's a strong, powerful woman, Theo, you know? Like... A very loud mouth. <laughs> what about D? D, oh my God, me and D are uh, up and down like... Like a roller coaster, they say. Um, D, what I'm going to miss are our little jokes. We have, little, we, we have little digs at each other every, every, nearly every day. 
Um, but funny, uh, she she got a good sense of humor, so she 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 gets my sense of humor, which not everyone does. Um, and I, but I'm not gonna miss just her bad attitude. <laughs> I'm not gonna miss her bad, especially after a few drinks. So she becomes dangerous. A bit like me, I guess. We got a lot in common, me and Dee. Funny she, enough, she protects Ninja like no other. What about her showman's Rogan? Oh. Rogan. <laughs> like, ah, uh, Rogan. Like, I lost all respect for Rogan when he nearly cried and begged on his knees for that elimination. No, no, for the tribunal he nearly got voted into. And he begged and he begged. And I was like, oh, if you'll be a man, innit? You've never done an elimination before. Get get it done. Do your first one. Um, and this is shady. He's shady, isn't he? He's a bit shady um, and a bit of a manipulator. I say one thing to your face, but then actually mean the op total opposite just so he could try and skate through like he did very lucky you got this season actually he had joss as a massive shield the biggest shield there is you know he, he wouldn't have he wouldn't have lasted as long in the game if it wasn't for joss so um yeah not going to miss many things about rogan well i will say it did seem uh in this week's episode that rogan felt kind of bad about throwing you in it, it he's had a little remorse do you not agree with that yeah only because for self-preservation, you know, he's thinking, oh, you know, we're going to get rid of our, someone who could potentially help us win. Is it the best move? Uh, probably not. It might work out, you know. Um, but that's the only reason why, because it affects his own chances. But, you know, he, the numbers mean more to everyone in the numbers. So, Do you think Rogan is the weakest male on the UK team? Uh, not to begin with. You know, there, there was a few people a lot weaker than him. Um, who, you know, everyone who's in the current team now, like, I wouldn't call him a weak one, just scared. You know, scared. And we did, we just don't know how someone's going to perform until, you know, they, they, they get to the final, I guess. But we didn't have high hopes. Um, but, you know, like I said, Go ahead, he's, yeah. he, he wasn't the weakest. Nah, you know, I'll give him a bit of credit. I need to see him perform in that proving ground so he can prove himself. What about his... Protective shield, Joss. Ah, oh, Joss. I tell you, two people who ru ruined my game was Idris this season and Joss. Joss, if he, I don't, I don't know what Joss is thinking because he's he, he teamed up with someone who lost him basically half a million dollars this two seasons before. So I was like, you, you're trusting this person, and this person's obviously trying to get the best people out in the team, and you're helping him do it. I just, it, I just, I just can't make no sense of it. So he, to me, nice guy, but um, you know, he needs to have more of a backbone. You know, make decisions for himself. And, you know, have have his own, have his own brain. You know, not he's getting, he's, you know, this, this is his bum. Uh, you know, and this is Rogan, and he was controlling him like this. So if he stepped away from Rogan, God knows, you know, he he could be a great, great guy. You know, and potentially win some money, but you know, so long as he's in Rogan's shadow. Um, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to limit him. We have to take a quick break right now, but Theo and I will continue our conversation on the other side of the break. Welcome back. I'm still on the line with Theo from MTV's The Challenge. Let's get right back into it. What about the bomb dropper herself, Kaylee? What are you going to miss about her, and what won't you miss about her? Weirdly, like, me and Kaylee, are, like, we're, we're good friends, you know, on the outsides you know, before going into this, but we got into that, and even from the, the get-go, we was like, we were enemies for no real reason. Um, but, you know, it's because she knew I had the mentality, like a manager's mentality. I want the, the best people in the final, um because to, to increase your chances and she knew she was one of the weak ones so she the, the weak the weaker people took control of the game because they, they knew they was bottom of the of the of the pole because they weren't as good clearly but you know they then they had to use their brains harder and they, you know come together but you know kelly was all about self-preservation really so she played the game and she had to play a lot harder you know do a bit of be a bit more schemey than um than a lot of people but like i said she was doing it for herself um, and you know it, that, like I said, that would take you so far. It might, it might get her to the final, um, but it's a weird, it's a weird one with me and Kaylee because you know we're cool on the outside but not cool in the inside. So it's, it's a complicated one there. 
Well, that defines the challenge, Theo. Let's hop across the pond and talk about your season 33 partner, Cara Maria. Yeah, Cara. Like, is it such a shame, you know? Is it? That's the biggest, that's the, the number one word, you know, I could, I could, I could associate with, with Cara. It's just a shame, you know? It, it turned like, if you're going, there, there's no real, like, if you're going, we are partners, and if you're going US versus UK, all right, cool. But then she didn't, she, the, when it comes to alliances, it's not like she was like, all right, then we're cool. We, you know, we do this numbers thing together and, you know, get rid of Joss and Rogan and everyone. You know, she, she turned on me, you know, with, with Paulie's help, you know, it was probably more Paulie's idea and whoever's idea more than hers. But, you know, she had, a, she, like I said, I, I just wouldn't do the same back to her. You know, she had a chance to, you know, show, she, she, well, she got forced, her hand got forced because Paulie and herself was always in the, um, the tribunal is this a shame because I can't trust her ever again. You know, if I if I had a, she would always be my number one if it ever comes to partners or something again, I, I'd, I'd always pick her. But now that's no longer the case, and um, I don't know. I don't know what's going on in the heads. Is it is a very odd one. I'm, I, I think she does feel some remorse about it because you know I never done anything wrong to her, and I still wasn't trying to get vengeance back on her. But um, you know, it, when it comes to future seasons, I, I will bear that in mind. And, uh, you know, our, our little friendship and little relationship is is no longer. If you were to put your money on Cara Maria or Polly winning, who would you put your money on? Ah, oh, Cara. You know, she's she's way better as a competitor for a female than Polly is, uh, hands down. You know, she's won. She's made, I don't know how many finals. Um, and Paulie, he's, he's, well, this is his third season now. And he just, he's not a turn up guy, you know? It's, it's all good having a, you know, having a great team or being a great person, you know, being a great competitor. But when it comes to the Olympic final, you know, football final, it's all good having a good streak and running good times or whatever, whatever league you're in. If you can't turn up, so when it, to the times where it really matters, like last, Last season, she didn't. You know, he flopped. Oh, um, and you know, we, we see we, we we see how he gets on um, when it comes to the end of this series. We we'll see we we'll see how he gets on. But you know, like I said, he, he's good. He's, he's a good all rounder. But when it comes to the times that really matters, um, he, he doesn't turn up. And I think if you're going to play such a hard game, like how him and him and Kara and them guys have done it. You, if you're going to sacrifice, you know, your reputation, if you're going to sacrifice, you know, what you've built up, you know, the, the love people have for you, and if you're going to chuck it all away, stab people in the back, lie to people's faces, shake hands, and go back on your word to be a coward, then you better back it up. You better, you better say, look, at least I've got half a million dollars to sit on to show for it. You know, it's all worth it. Because if you can't go and back it up at the end of it, then, you know, you just... You've sacrificed everything and you've lost everything for what? Amen, so. Theo. Well, thank you so much for putting your cast on blast and for chatting with us today. Good luck with your eye. We're all wishing the best for you. Watch the Challenge War of the Worlds 2 Wednesday nights at 9, 8 central on MTV. We covered a lot of ground today, Dave. Yeah, it was a packed show. So many things. From love triangles to baking to the challenge, there was a ton to talk yeah. about. Big thanks to Rachel and Colleen, Theo and David Atherton. Make sure you're following at people on Twitter so you can catch the latest episode of Reality Check, which streams Monday through Thursday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. I'm Darren Karp. And I'm Dave Quinn. And that was your Reality Check. No, no, I look for Dell that the one who you cheated on. Cheated? Oh, girl, please. please. In this 2014 reunion episode of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, Kenya accuses Portia of infidelity. Listen, you are not going to keep on talking about, about my character line, like you know what that. you're talking about. Things quickly escalate when Kenya goes for the megaphone. You are a dumb hog. Shut up. Yeah, you want to hear me? And Portia goes for the mega takedown. <laughs> No, 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 no,
Portia and Kenya's reunion smackdown is one of the great moments in reality history, and you gotta give Andy props for trying to keep the peace. No, 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 no,